According to several sources in Silicon Valley, including people who previously worked with Apple at the level of semiconductor supply chains and related R&D contractors, the company has entered a deeply closed development phase of a fundamentally new product that inside the corporation is described not as a device, not as an accessory, and not even as a continuation of the iPhone or Vision lineup, but as a new level of human technology convergence. And this wording, according to insiders, is increasingly used in closed internal presentations. The project involves a special computing module informally referred to as a wearable neural interface, which in its concept and purpose really resembles Elon Musk's Neuralink, but at the same time fully fits Apple's DNA because it does not require surgery, implants, or direct contact with the brain. Unlike Musk's approach, which relies on directly connecting neurons to silicon, Apple, according to sources, has chosen a more subtle and more scalable path to blur the boundary between the human body and the interface not through an operation, but through everyday use, turning the human arm itself into a computing and control platform, essentially creating an iPhone without an iPhone, where the screen, buttons, and casing are no longer mandatory elements. Based on descriptions obtained by journalists from the supply chain, this is a compact next-generation chip embedded in a special bracelet or cuff worn on the forearm and operating in combination with projection technologies, an AI assistant, and a neuromuscular signal recognition system that reads micro-movements, impulses, and the electrical activity of the arm muscles. This technology is not science fiction. Moreover, its core elements already exist, from solutions in the field of electromyography to experiments by meta and startups working on interface control through thought-like signals without implants. However, Apple is reportedly the first to attempt to combine all of this into a single consumer product capable of scaling to hundreds of millions of users. Sources claim that inside the company the project is informally viewed as a potential post-iPhone product meaning a technology that does not simply complement the smartphone, but over time may replace the very concept of a pocket screen. And this explains why work on it began now, rather than 10 years ago, when Apple still had absolute dominance in the smartphone market. According to analysts at Morgan Stanley and JP Morgan, who in recent quarters increasingly speak about stagnation in the global phone market, Apple, for the first time in many years, has found itself in a situation where its historic advantages ecosystem and design are no longer an unbreakable barrier. Chinese manufacturers have learned to produce devices of comparable quality, and AI has become an equalizing factor that allows competitors to catch up and even surpass Apple in user experience. Sources in Asia note that within Apple, a troubling idea is voiced more and more often. A regular iPhone is no longer enough to retain the audience, and it is this concern rather than pure technological ambition that became the main catalyst for launching the project. Yes, this year the company really is preparing to introduce a foldable iPhone, as reported by Bloomberg and The Information, but inside Apple this product is seen as a tactical rather than strategic step that can only temporarily sustain interest without changing the overall trajectory. A completely new device category is what can return the company to the status of an unquestioned leader, and this is exactly where the idea of turning the human arm into an interface emerges. According to insiders, the concept looks as follows. The user puts a device on their arm that contains a specialized chip with a neural network accelerator connected to an AI model that operates either locally or through Apple's secure cloud, while all visual output is projected either onto the palm, into the space in front of the user, or through integration with next-generation augmented reality glasses. Control is carried out not through a screen, but through micro-movements of the fingers, gestures, muscle tension, and contextual commands that the AI interprets even before the user consciously formulates an action. And this is exactly where sources draw a parallel with Neuralink, because the ultimate goal is the same, to reduce the delay between intention and execution to the lowest possible level. According to one former Apple engineer involved in early research, the philosophy of the project is stated very clearly. The technology must disappear. Only the result should remain. And this fully reflects the company's long-term strategy of hiding complexity behind simplicity. 
At the same time, it is emphasized that at the current stage, this is not a product ready for the mass market, but a long-term development whose first prototypes are still in the laboratory phase, and real demonstrations may only be possible in a few years. However, the very fact that such a development has begun is already seen by the market as a signal that Apple is preparing for an era in which the smartphone is no longer the center of digital life. It is also important that, according to respected publications, Apple has sharply increased investment in its own AI models, including closed versions independent of external providers. And this, according to analysts, is what makes such a product possible because without deep AI integration, a hand-based interface simply would not work at the level the company expects. Sources in Cupertino claim that the project is directly linked to Apple's internal understanding of the threat posed by next-generation AI devices that may appear on the market in the coming years, from wearable assistants to completely screenless gadgets. And if Apple does not lead this transition, it risks becoming a follower, as has already happened with some technologies in the past. That is why within the company, the phrase reboot of the human user interface is being used more and more often. And although Apple publicly continues to focus on the evolution of the iPhone and vision, behind the scenes preparations are underway for a far more radical scenario. Analysts note that this approach fits perfectly with the current moment, increasing computing power, chip miniaturization, breakthroughs in projection systems, and a dramatic leap in AI capabilities are creating a window of opportunity that may close as quickly as it opened, and Apple cannot afford to miss it. For this reason, many experts believe that the start of development on such a chip is not an experiment, but a necessary step driven by a shift in the balance of power in the market. And even if the first commercial versions of the device appear only closer to the end of the decade, the very fact that Apple is laying the foundation now shows that the company is preparing for a world where familiar technologies stop being familiar and the boundary between human and device becomes increasingly blurred. In this context, the ARM iPhone project looks not like a fantasy, but as a logical continuation of the very idea Apple began with, making technology as close to the human being as possible. And if the sources are right, this may mark the beginning of a new era where the interface is no longer kept in a pocket, but worn as part of one's own body. And it may be Apple that launches this shift, changing not only the market, but the very way people interact with the digital world. That is why more and more experts are paying attention to the fact that in recent months, Apple has begun to behave unusually cautiously in its public statements, while at the same time acting unusually aggressively in its closed-door investments especially in the areas of neural interfaces, sensor technologies, and alternative input methods. And this rarely happens without a clear understanding of an upcoming shift. According to sources familiar with discussions at the board level, the question increasingly heard inside the company is not what the next iPhone will be like, but whether an iPhone in its current form is needed at all in 5 or 10 years. And if this question is being asked seriously, it means Apple already envisions a future where the screen is no longer the center of interaction and the human being becomes the interface. That is why the development of such a chip is seen not as a product for early enthusiasts, but as a potential foundation for a new ecosystem that may eventually replace familiar devices, just as the iPhone once replaced button phones. And if these leaks are even partially confirmed, then we are witnessing not just another stage in the evolution of technology, but the beginning of a slow, almost imperceptible transition into a world where the boundary between a person and the digital environment is finally erased, 